Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video, I am so excited to do. I'm gonna be talking about things brands do I don't enjoy. Pet peeves from brands. I'm not really sure what the title will be yet. Hopefully it is something catchy that made you want to click on this video. But basically I'm just gonna be touching on a few things that I've seen brands do that I don't necessarily love myself so it was a last year emily noel actually posted a video like this i will link her channel down below and i put it on my list to do and then i just never got around to it and each month i would write it down again like gotta do that video i just never did it last night i was actually in the shower and i had that moment of i get so mad when brands don't do this and i thought I never did that video so I decided that was what I was going to sit down and film today so we're gonna be going through some pet peeves from makeup brands before we get into it I do want to say that there is a sponsor on today's video and this video is sponsored by Karma formerly known as Shop Tiger so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that first and then we'll jump into the pet peeves All right, so I have been able to work with Shop Tiger in the past and they have recently rebranded and they are now known as Karma. So Karma is an app and also a Chrome extension to help you save money when you are shopping for makeup, getting coupons and cash back, letting you know when items uh, go on sale, if something's out of stock, if it comes back in stock. So they have both the app and the Chrome extension and I will have a link in my description box if you wanna check it out. It is completely free, so really there's just no reason not to. So if you do already have it downloaded or you do already have the app, you should have already seen everything change over to Karma. Like I mentioned, it's just a great shopping tool to help you save money and know when things are back in stock or if something's going on sale. I have purchased so much through Karma, including uh, the camera that I'm filming on, my Canon G7X Mark II. It's always very expensive when you're getting a new camera, so it's great to be able to get them on sale. So I just added this to my list. Once it went on sale, I got the notification bought the camera and that was great in my last house I did a lot of decorating and I was buying some you know some making some bigger purchases so it really helped to be able to find items on sale or to be able to use the coupon code feature I mean even every single time that I shop for makeup or for clothes online I'm always running the coupon feature on karma to make sure that I am getting any money off that I possibly can so I think it's great to use and it's definitely helped me save a lot of money so if you're not familiar with them I will have uh, kind of like a little run through of everything on the screen here so you can see how that works so the first thing that you would want to do is download the chrome extension uh, and also you could do the app on your phone or do both so that you never miss a notification that's what i do because i always want to know when i can save money uh, but again it is free so you would just go ahead and download that and create your account from there you can do a different list you can do lists for makeup and for home and for fashion and for whatever it is that you technology whatever it is that you wanna make your list into. And then anytime that you go to a store website, uh, you can just use the extension there to add a product to your list. You can have them, uh, you, you can let them know if you wanna get notified when something goes on sale, when it comes back in stock, or you can just use it as kind of a wish list too. That's something that I've done. When I see something and I, you know, I don't wanna forget about it, you can just add it to your karma list and you're good to go. Like I said, one of my favorite features is the coupon feature. So anytime that you are getting ready to check out, uh, usually for me, it just pops up on my end, or again, you can also hit the extension uh, on your computer to have the uh, drop on drop down come in, and then Karma will run through all of these different coupons. So that way you don't have to go searching for the coupons or go on like the scammy, spammy websites that give you the fake coupon codes. You don't have to deal with any of that. And then it'll apply the coupon right there so you can save money. You can also earn it cash back with Karma. So they just introduced this feature pretty recently. I really enjoy how they're always like, trying to add new things for us. I, I really like that because I've had them for such a long time. So now they have the cash back feature and then you can earn uh, earn cash through PayPal there. I have a big list of stores. I know that they're adding more stores to be able to get cash back to. So that's another great feature. So again, I will have that link in my description box if you wanted to get the uh, Chrome extension for Karma. Again, it's just, it's a free tool to be able to save money. <laughs> and I really do appreciate that. You know, I'm always trying 
to save my money. So I definitely recommend them. Thank you so much to Karma for continuing to work with me. Uh, I really enjoy being able to work with the brand and let you guys know about them because without fail, someone always tells me after one of these videos that they didn't have it yet and they have finally downloaded it and how excited you are about that. So make sure to check them out. Thank you again to Karma for sponsoring this one. And thank you all for your continued support and giving me these sponsorships. I really do appreciate it. And let's hop over to my pet peeves. So I wanted to focus this video on topics that I don't normally talk about as much. I feel like, you know, here and there in my videos, I'll mention like the little things that bug me, you know, like releasing a lot of products at one time or like releasing, you know, kind of the same product again and again, but in different packaging, that sort of thing. Like I save those quite a bit on my channel. So I was trying to go for like different topics that I don't normally discuss as much. And one, I don't know if I've... <laughs> I don't know if I've ever really mentioned this on my channel, but this is what I thought of in the shower last night. I was I was doing my thing in the shower and then I had gotten a new hair mask actually from Briogeo, not to like call them out or anything, but I'd gotten a new hair mask from this happens across the board with like hair care and skincare. And I grabbed the mask and I was like, oh, I wonder if I was supposed to put this on like dry hair first and then rinse it and follow a shampoo and conditioner or should I put it on before my condition, I'm not really sure. So I picked it up, you know, I'd already taken it out of the box and put it in my shower and there was nothing, no details on the actual product itself. Everything would have been on the box, which you immediately take the product out of the box and then I threw it away and I was like, should, should I, what should I, what should I do? I did put it on my hair. It was the like the avocado one. I have to say my hair feels very soft today. So I feel like I maybe did it right. But I was like, well, I'm already in the shower. I can't go like get my phone and Google it and see what I should do. But I've seen that happen with skincare so much too. There's the directions on the packaging, but then you throw away the packaging and then on the actual skincare, it doesn't say, you know, apply to dry skin or damp skin or whatever it may be. Like there's just, there's nothing on it or like ingredients a lot. I just, I don't know. I, I know sometimes there's only so much that you can put on the actual bottle, but I don't know when it comes to skincare, it's like sometimes I would really like to know to have the ingredients just right there. It is something that kind of bothers me. And I, I feel like with skincare, especially over hair care, that was just like what made me remember that I wanted to do this video. This is something that I do remember I had on my list from when I was working on this last year. I wish I still had my list, but I did not take the notebook that it was written down in. I, you know, got rid of quite a few of my notebooks in my move. I just recently moved from Iowa to Las Vegas and, you know, I only had so much space to be able to bring things. So, you know, a lot of things either had to get left behind or I just couldn't make it with me. So one of my notebooks was it. And I wish I would have it because I know I wrote down a list and I was trying to remember everything that I wrote down, but I know that this was one of them. It's that I get really irritated when brands only share big influencers, whether it be on Instagram, like sharing reposts and they're only influencers or content creators that are already very well known or you know, even sometimes like on Twitter, like what if just when brands will only focus on like that top 1% of the beauty community. And it's like, there's so many of us out here, you know, it's like you have so many options to choose from yet. You only post the same like 10 people. What is that? Uh, that is something that really bothers me. I feel like maybe from last year to this year, I feel like maybe I've seen a difference. I don't see it happening as much and brands are starting to understand that they can reach out and they like there's more than those just top people that are that that love makeup and love what we do and maybe we could like share the love with one another but I don't know it's just it's there's still some brands that it only seems like that's who they gravitate towards and it's just like it's just annoying kind of along those same lines but it is that brands will only repost. <laughs> I want to be careful with my words, but like very photoshopped photos or just the most like extravagant over the top kind of photos. And you know, some brands, maybe that's more of their aesthetic and more of like their audience. But I just feel like there's so many brands. I'll go to their Instagram and just see perfection and who they repost. And I mean, 
Photoshop and Facetune, I, it just is what it is, right? Like I, I will not tell you that I post 100% unedited photos because that's just a lie. Like, I don't edit, I just don't know how. I don't know how to edit my photos to make even just my makeup pop a little bit more. I just, I don't know how to do that without taking away what I actually look like. Um, and I know that there's people that are so talented, they can, they can still keep their makeup they can just make things a little bit brighter they can do like they can just fix the lighting in the background like there's just they can do all of these amazing things but i just feel like there's so many times i go to a brand's instagram and it's just like perfect photo after perfect photo after highly edited photo highly edited photo highly edited you know face tune and it's just to me there's so many quote unquote just regular makeup lovers on the internet and using these social media apps that when you go to a brand's page that you love and you look at it and you only see this image of perfection it just i don't know at least for me it makes me feel like i'm not good enough like i'm not beautiful enough to use this brand. I'm too imperfect to use this brand. When you go and look at a brand's page and not one person has texture on their skin, not one person has breakouts, not one person has lines on their face, it's like, okay. I mean, we're just, it's just real life. So I just, I feel like it's so refreshing when I go, just the other day, I was uh, I was watching a TikTok and it was from Persona Cosmetics. They just came out with their new cream bronzers and they were doing a makeup tutorial and it you could tell that it was unedited. I could see the hair on the model's face. We never, like what? Hair on a face? Like we never see that. Like you could see that, you could see texture, you could see pores on the model. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like it made me so excited. And I, I think, at least I hope that more brands are starting to see that and we're starting to not only post perfection. I've been trying to do it myself. I've been putting up photos that are unedited and the videos where uh, I'm just using my phone and the camera on my phone really picks up everything. And I've had so many people say, thank you for not editing your photos. Thank you for, you know, still putting your pimple in there. And thank you for showing close-ups, and I can see your pores and it, it's because it, it's real. It's just real life and more people relate to that than we relate to only seeing perfection and then it just gives the beauty standards and it makes all of us, not even just a younger generation, but it makes even me at 34 be like, I'm not good enough because I don't look like that. But that person doesn't look like that either. The photo has been edited. <laughs> Again, it just kind of goes back to, to even just the first thing I said about, you know, there's a huge part of the beauty industry is just us regular, I consider myself like just us regular folks that really love makeup and so to only be posting that and showcasing that on Instagram feeds and TikToks and YouTube videos, I feel like it's doing a disservice to so many people. Another thing, and this caught me, this caught me the other day, it didn't give me the idea for this video, it was the sharp, but this caught me the other day and I was so so mad, but like the plastic packaging I think the next couple have to do with packaging and the next two have to do with packaging. The plastic packaging to where you can't get it off. You can't get it off. It's just, you're not gonna get it off. Is hmm, so frustrating. And this is, this usually is what happens with drugstore brands and like, I get it ish. Like I get why they're doing it ish. But at the same time, I was trying to take, I bought the uh, Shady Slim Brow Pencil from LA Girl. <laughs> really do feel like I'm calling out brands, but I'm saying like good things too. Like I talked about Persona, I feel like that was a good thing. I bought this, uh, this, the Shady Slim Brow Pencil. I could not, could not get that plastic off. Again, I just moved. I do not know where my tweezers are because normally I would try to take a tweezers and get it off. I, I don't know. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm trying so hard and I got a pen. Like at one point I had a pen. At one point I had my big scissors. I was trying, I just, there's still plastic on both ends, like both uh, caps of the brow pencil. There's still plastic on both of them. And one is, it's just, it bothers me so much. <laughs> it just, to me, it just seems unnecessary. Like I'm sure there's reasonings for it and all. But to me, it's just very frustrating. Okay, I just went to go get the brow pencil to show you. But like, the plastic is still on this part. Can't get it off. And then the other cap. 
can't get it off. It's just gonna have to stay this way until I can figure out how it just, yeah, just gonna stay this way. That's what bothers me. And then on that end, this is kind of weird, but it has to do again with brow pencils. I don't know what this is about, but this one especially is very tricky, but a lot of brow pencils have different sized caps for the brow pencil to the spoolie. And at first I'm like, I don't know, like I get it because it like helps you decipher what end is what, but at the same time, I'm almost always doing like, almost always doing this and if you, sometimes it really sucks if you don't have your brow pencil down all of the way and then you try to put and then it doesn't that's really frustrating but especially with these this uh huda beauty bomb brow which is what i have in my brows today because of like the square and the package like you it it just those little extra seconds that it takes is like it sounds so ridiculous but it does drive me crazy but i would at least like if they could just be the same size so i could just I don't is it's like would it be more annoying if I was like oh I'm gonna do brow brows oh a spoolie or I don't I feel like putting it back on annoys me more I don't know is that a weird one what do you guys think about that one <laughs> the last two I wrote down I'll just go through it quickly because I feel like those I kind of have mentioned but one especially is when like retractable items when you can't uh, twist it back down that drives me bonkers this bomb brow does not do that just that was my example but there's uh what is it? Is it the lip liner from Patrick Ta that doesn't go back down? That just drives me insane. And I'm pretty sure there's a brow pencil that I tried once and it doesn't go back down. And I was like, a brow pencil? Cause it's like, sometimes I push it up pretty far because I don't know how much, I just, I, mm. I don't like that. I don't like that. And then the last thing that I had written on my list is that when brands change formulas, I'm, I know that I had this one written down last year and I think what I was specifically thinking of was ColourPop because ColourPop just seems like I just feel like I never really know what they're doing and especially in the beginning though when I first purchased like their matte liquid lipsticks I was like oh this is a great formula and then I bought like 10 more and tried them and I was like I feel like this is a different formula and then I bought even more and I was like wait I feel like this is different from the first two formulas and I, I think they came out at one point to say like you've been you know changing up the, the the formula across things but even their eyeshadow palettes I feel like I'm not really sure what formula I'm gonna get from palette to palette and then I thought I had it narrowed down to like the collab palettes and the Disney collabs they were one formula and other things were a different way but then the blush crush I didn't think was very good but the um, Mandalorian palette I thought was great so I was like I guess I don't really know how it is they do things over here so that's something that it just kind of irks me also so yeah but I I feel like I've touched on that before too, but those are just a few things. Those are just a few uh, pet peeves that I have from brands. I don't know. I would love to know some of yours. I kind of wanted to keep this one a little shorter just because yeah, I'm not usually like a very salty person, but every once in a while, it's kind of nice to just, just say, say the things that kind of bother you. And the whole like incident in the shower last night just made me remember this video. So I would love to hear any of yours in the comments. Of course, it sounds like someone is uh, cleaning out in the hallway. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. That's a good indicator that it's time to go. But definitely let me know some of yours in the comments. Again, check out Emily Noel's channel. She's the one that I saw, but she's the one that I got this video idea from last year again thank you so much to karma for sponsoring this video that link is going to be in the description box if you want to check out their chrome extension or their app i highly recommend them and thank you so much to them for sponsoring this thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed it please make sure to give it a thumbs up i hope you also consider subscribing before you go and i'll see you in my next video bye